Hello, and welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley, and in today's class, for the next hour, once again, we will be learning idioms. Today's class will focus on idioms that we use to talk about objects, things, uh, and their condition or their quality, uh, good and bad. So, as usual in my idioms classes, students will take turns doing some fill in the blank ex type exercises, maybe mix and match. And uh, as we go along doing the exercise exercises, we will be uh, discussing the idioms, any including any uh, situational use that um, may come into play. And uh, I'll do my best to brainstorm any related idioms, and uh, I urge students to join me. If you can think of any, share them with the class. Uh, as well, as usual, uh, always I encourage uh, students to uh, share idioms from their own native languages uh, that may be related. I, I personally find them interesting, and I welcome you to share them. Uh, okay, that's it for my intro. Uh, let me welcome students and do a little microphone check and we'll get started. Uh, hi, Mustafa. How are you? Hi. Hi, teacher. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I forgot what? to say peachy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was waiting for. Exactly. Yeah. What? I was yeah. surprised, actually. What? <laughs> what are you saying? Okay. Anyway, all right. Glad to see you. Glad you could uh, join Thank me. You. Thanks. Uh, um. All right. We're gonna get started. Hey, plenty of room in the class. Uh, you verbling students out there who might be watching, come on in. Jump on in because there's plenty of room. And uh, we're class. Gonna... yeah, this class turned out to be one one session. I don't know two one. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, I, I, I imagine there might be a few people joining us. Uh, hello, Anna. Anna. Hi. Hello, teacher. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon for you. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing just fine. I'm peachy, in fact. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm doing great. Thank you. Nice to see you. Glad to hear that. Uh, okay, let's get started. We're going to warm up by doing a kind of basic vocabulary exercise, looking at some literal meanings of a few of the key words that we're later going to see in the idioms. So, kind of uh, important to understand these key words. So, plus it's a nice warm up. So, let's get started. Uh, okay. Simple fill in the blank exercise. Fill in the blank with these uh, these words in bold italics here. Uh, Mustafa, kindly read number one and do your best. I hope. Okay. <laughs> um, mm, uh, number one. In golf, a hole should be completed in four strokes. It is a blank four. Mm. Mm -hmm. If a goal in, in goal, if a hole should be completed in four strokes, it is uh, uh, the problem is I don't know what farming is. What's farming? Uh, ah, oh. yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> par. Yeah. Par, and that is right. Uh, okay, that's what par means. Um, it, I take it you don't play a lot of golf. Uh, yeah. Eat. Yeah. Okay, I, real basic. Uh, a game of golf involves 18 holes. Each hole, you have to put the ball in the hole by hitting it with clubs. Each hole has a par. One, a shorter one, maybe par three. You're supposed to get the ball in the hole in three strokes, three hits of the club strokes. Uh, a, a much longer one might be a par five, for example. Okay, um. so. So golfers measure their total score for 18 holes 
instead of giving a number, they often say, oh, I was six over par, or I was two under par, like that. Oh, okay, so, okay. Okay, so that's the idea that par is the desired amount, all right? So keep that in mind when later we look at the, uh, the idiom. Okay, right. thank you. Sure. Uh, okay, we've been joined by a bunch of other folks here. Uh, a uh, an anachronism, <laughs> anarchism. Oh, not an anachronism. <laughs> Sorry, I misread that. Nice to you. Nice to see you. Hi. Uh, what should I? How should I address you? What should I call you? You can call me by my English name, Joe. Joe. Okay. Uh, I can certainly handle that name. Thank you. All right, Joe. Thanks for joining us. Talk to you in just a little bit. Uh, let me also welcome Amas. Yes. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Glad to hear it. Um, <laughs> welcome to the class. Uh, and uh, also David. Hi, David. How are you today? Hello. I'm fine. Thank you. Glad to hear it. Uh, glad you could join us. Okay. Uh, let's continue. A Anna, number two. Okay. A large uh, round container for holding beer <coughs> or oil is called uh, a barrel. Ah, uh, that's right, a barrel. Right, barrel. that's it. Yeah, uh, of course, other things may be in a barrel as well. They sell oil typically by the barrel, right. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, Quick shout out to Adnan. Hi, hi, Adnan. Welcome. Hi, Tisha. Hello, hello. Hi. Uh, glad you could join us. Uh, okay, uh, Joe. You need to go ahead and read number three for me, please. Okay. An excellent golfer who no longer has a handicap. It is. It is called a. Uh, uh, Scratch player. That's it. A scratch player. You're correct. Uh, look, yeah, I, I, my long-winded explanation of par with Mustafa earlier comes into play. Uh, the idea is that each hole has a designated par, and at the end you add up the 18 scores for the 18 holes of golf. And if you managed to at least average par on every hole, that means you're going to be zero basically not over par not under par another word for zero in English is scratch uh, another way to express zero is actually the word scratch so that means you're there you go you're a scratch player uh, okay let me uh, quickly welcome Heidi Hi, hello Heidi how are you hello <laughs> Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, okay, let's continue. Um, Amas, can you try yeah. number four, please? Half kilometer is five miles. Approximately, yeah, that's right. Okay, miles, obviously, unit of measurement used in the UK and the United States. Uh, all right, that one's pretty straightforward. So, David, how about number five? If you burn food on a pan when you are cooking, you need to scrape it clean before you wash it. Uh, yeah, okay. This is our lone verb. Of course, scratch can be a verb as well. You have an itch, you scratch it. Scrape is also a verb. To scrape is to use some kind of a sharp edge to, to uh, drag on another surface, probably usually to remove something. You uh, step in a dog, <laughs> a dog mess. You want to scrape that off your shoe, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. These, uh, some of these words and a whole lot more are going to be in the idioms, which we are going to look at now. Uh, all right. Once again, we're talking about idioms that talk about the condition or the quality of items. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to fill in the blanks with these these idioms here and, and talk about them. See which ones you know. We'll talk about them a little bit, and then we're gonna use the same idioms in the next exercise to fill in the blanks um, in a in dialogues, so we can kind of see how they would actually be used in spoken English. First things first. Let's see how many of these we know or can figure out together. Uh, Adnan, how about A? Okay, well, uh, it's an. Uh, sorry, teacher, I contact with A from uh, A to another con, G or A or anyone, or use What's... from this. Uh, What's that? Can you can you see the uh, material? It's on gold, yeah. maybe. It's in a blank of its own. Well, I'm not. Here's a clue. <laughs> here's a clue. <laughs> Up here. Mm, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, it comes under the heading of this material right here. Uh, it's in a league of its own. Do you know what a league is? League. Do you, have, do you have any idea? Okay, well, there's a couple meanings, actually. It's a unit of measurement uh, for... It's a nautical or, or sea ships and boats unit of measurement. However, it is also um, an organization, usually an organization of teams to uh, support and organize a sport. For example, MLB is Major League Baseball. American Baseball League is a professional league is called the MLB. Uh, Major League Baseball. So sports leagues would be organized with a bunch of teams and they would probably have a playoff and and like that. It, it's a type of organization. So when the idiom, it, it's in a league of its own, okay, it, the meaning is that it's superior. It's, it's uniquely superior to other things of its type. Okay, it is possible to use this for things, uh, a company, a product, um, a car, whatever. It's also possible to use this idiom for people. Now, <laughs> English can be a very sarcastic language. Uh, so when you say somebody is in a league of their own, you may be, be being complimentary. But you also may be being sarcastic, meaning that he's like really crazy and unusual and strange and weird, weirdly unique. Or he could be a unique in a superior quality, good quality kind of way. So be aware that it can be used positively. It could be used sarcastically, negatively. Yeah, Anna, that's about it. Separate and distinct from other people. So, there you go. That, that's pretty much hit the nail on the head. Uh, okay, Heidi, do you know B? It's the uh, mint gold. No. Aha, mint gold. They go together, but nope. That that's not it. Uh, you have another idea? Another idea. Mint is um, a mint. Mint is in, uh, yeah, to mint money as a verb. However, or it's a tasty candy that tastes like peppermint or spearmint. But, wait a minute, hold everything. It can also be an adjective. Uh, uh, it's an adjective to des describe basically perfect. Uh, it's new. off. What's that? No, new. No, not. Not exactly new. It's often used by, this terminology is often used by collectors for things like stamps and coins. Mm -hmm. 
okay, if they are absolutely perfect. So it could be a coin from 1840, okay, but it's actually perfect. There's no scratches. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, there's no tarnish. Um, so, then condition? There you go. Exactly. Perfect. So it's in mint condition. Exactly. Okay. And clearly, obviously, these collectible items, if it's in mint condition, obviously it's worth a lot more money. That's kind of a obvious, but uh, connotation. And it means it's perfect. Not no has more to do with the idea of being having no defects rather than being perfect or new. Okay, very good. Good job figuring that out. Mustafa, how about C? Do you have any idea? Okay. C, it is black and sho Oh, it's head and shoulder above the rest. C, D, C. Yeah, it goes yeah. with shoulders, right. Head and shoulders above the rest, again, uh, superior. Very, very, very close, actually, to in a league of its own. Um, and once again, like it, it's in a league of its own, it can be used for things or for people. Uh, yeah. 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 Like, like for example, I have maybe a special dentist, and I prefer him over the rest. So it's his head and shoulder above the rest, like comparison. Yes, often used in comparison. You're exactly correct. Uh, although it's similar to it's in a league of its own, I, I mentioned in a league of its own is more about uniqueness. So it could be used to talk about a crazy person. It could be used sarcastically. Uh, head and shoulders above the rest is not used that way. It's always positive. It, it's not something that lends itself to sarcasm. Okay. Uh, very good. Anna, how about uh, D? Okay. <clears throat> uh, sorry, I lost the, the screen. It's uh, seeing uh, better um, days. Better days. Yeah. Speaking of sarcasm... This is actually quite sarcastic. Yes. Yeah, it's seen better days. Uh, kind of a sarcastic remark. Now, um, if it's seen better days, that means it's not as good as it used to be. Um, yeah. Now, this one is generally used for objects. Uh, you wouldn't talk about somebody else using this. He's seen better days. That doesn't really make sense. Uh, it might be possible, if you're having a really bad day, <laughs> to talk about yourself. I've seen better days, but uh, not really the same meaning. The meaning then is kind of... Yes. You're really actually talking about the day. I'm having a bad day. Yeah. Okay. You see. Uh, this would be used very... About a car, for example. You know, a car, a 1984... <laughs> Yes, in bad, in bad condition, maybe. Yeah, an old car. Yeah, something like that. Uh, that's it. Okay, that's the idea. Joe, how about uh, E? You figure this one out? Okay, it's nothing to write. Uh, write about. Sorry, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, the the concept is it's nothing special. Um, so actually, the idiom and it's a very pretty normal English idiom. It's pretty common. Um, it's again, this is kind of sarcastic. It's nothing to write home about, <laughs> Joe. It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing special. Uh. uh Okay, now this could be used to, to de describe an object. Um, you know what, it can also be used, it's not used to describe a person. He's nothing to write home about. Yeah, well, maybe, actually. Have you seen Susie's new boyfriend? He's nothing to write home about. Actually, yes, that would work when I think about it. It can also, in addition... This is kind of the first one we've looked at that can be used to talk about a situation. Oh, yeah, I, I've got a new job, but it's nothing to write home about. Yeah, I'm working at McDonald's cooking French fries. So, 
Uh, yeah, it's a job. It's a good job. McDonald's is a good company, but it's nothing special. It's not. I'm not an astronaut or anything like that. Uh, that's the idea. Okay. You know, uh, you get a car, and it's a utilitarian car, and it's very practical. All right. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's not a bad car, but it's nothing to write home about. It's not a Lamborghini. Okay. Eh. That's the idea. Uh, all right. Um, moving on. Amos. Yes? Oh. Yeah. How about F? Do you have any idea what this might be? Is far better. It's par better. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of funny because. I mean, at first I said I thought you said far. Well, you know, a very common phrase would be "it's far better." Just a simple comparison, but uh, it's the same kind of idea. Par is not the right answer. It's far better is actually a very common phrase of comparison. Think about that: far, distance. Sometimes we measure quality by framing it in comparison with distance can you can you take a second guess thinking about distance it's my better there you go very good your logic is superior sir that's exactly correct it's miles better and the way I just said it just it's miles better um, yeah with the exaggerated intonation would be typically uh, how you would hear it. And this is specifically, well, this is to talk about objects, but it could also be something like a movie or something like that. Um, talking about a restaurant or something, reviewing something can be used that way too. Uh, okay, good job, Amas. Uh, David, how about G? Can you figure this one out? Um. It's out of this uh, world. Yes, it is. Uh, another very common one. Um, okay. It's great. Basically, that's it. Uh, okay, now, uh, this one would be probably not talking about an object, not talking about a person, but maybe talking about an activity, uh, a place. Oh, the restaurant is out of this world. Um, okay. Wow, the, the new amusement park that just opened outside the city is out of this world. It's awesome. You're going to have so much fun there. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, In Spanish, we say it's uh, another world. It's another world? Yes. Oh, that's to interesting. Say, to say the same. The, another world, different world. Better work. I think. Okay, then see that's it, that's interesting. In English, if I say um, it's another world, like maybe I travel to I don't know Borneo or somewhere very exotic, I might describe it to you, David, by saying, "Wow, you, you won't believe it, David. It's another world." Just to mm -hmm. emphasize, it's completely different. Or maybe even I go to some crazy weird nightclub or something. Where I don't know the whole all everyone on the staff is is dressed in animal fur or something weird you know something crazy I might describe the nightclub it's really out of this world you you got to check it out uh, it's out of this world or it's a really another world meaning it's very different it's out of this world is about it's great okay, okay. Uh, all right thank you for sharing that that's interesting. Uh, Adnan, let's look at H. Can you try to figure this one out? H, uh, well, it's on its last condition. Mm, no. Uh, this one's very idiomatic. Uh, this would be used 
to talk about again something like an old car, thirty year old car or something. The last gold, maybe. Uh, no, it's, it can also be used about a person. Okay, maybe this will help. Adnan. It can also be used about a person who's who's so unhealthy they're they look like they're ready to die. They're about ready to die. So think about it in terms of a person. It's on its last days. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Well, no, but it's not quite it. Actually, I know it's it's on its last legs or talking about a person who's about to die or seems like he's about to die. He's on his last legs. Uh yeah, it's and the same thing when you're talking about an object. It's something that's about to die. It's going to be broken soon, in in your opinion. Uh, it won't work much longer. So same, really, the same kind of idea for people or things. Okay, uh, Heidi, how about I? I. Uh, it worth its weight in gold. Yeah, very good. Worth its weight in gold. Very common expression. Um, can, uh, again, it's another one that can be used about discussing objects or can be used to talk about uh, people. A, a boss, an employer, might say this about an employee, for example. Oh, Susie, my personal assistant, is worth her weight in gold. Obviously meaning very valuable to me. The person or thing you're talking about is considered to be of high value. Is pretty clear meaning there. Mustafa, last one, and then we'll get to the dialogue. Okay, it's below uh, worlds. Uh, par, 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 par. There's your par. Yes, it's yeah. below par, and very straight, more direct. You know, uh, you can say we have the term subpar as well, below average. Par is average. Again, going back to the golf thing. Um, oh, dear. Anna's feeling below par today. Okay. Well, uh, Anna, yes, you could actually say that. That would be a very normal thing today uh, to, to say. Um, you use this to to rate it could be used to rate the quality of an object um, but it also is very often used to talk about the quality of service or the quality of workmanship or something uh, something of that type and Anna's perfectly correct we um, we could use this to talk about a person about their health or yeah uh, all right, if you say I'm feeling below par today, yeah, you don't feel so great. Maybe you're a little bit sick or something. Okay, now let's see how good a job I've done. I've done my best to try to explain how these are used or when these are used. So let's take a look at uh, some dialogues here and see if you can figure out which Peter. go where. Yes, Mustafa? Uh, just, just about uh, D. It seemed better uh, days, we say it, right? Yeah. So, uh, like to cry something old, and I say it's seen better days, or what? I, I didn't get it. Yeah, probably something, probably something old, but it, it's something in very bad condition. Um, okay. You know, okay. Uh, so not necessarily old. Uh, you know, it could it could even be relatively new, but somehow it got damaged. In, in some way. All right, you, I don't know. You buy a brand new kayak, and the first time you take it down the river, it gets all scratched and scraped up, and it gets a big dent in the side. Oh, all right, it's seen better days. Hmm. All right. Uh, it's d probably okay. damaged in some way. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. All right, now we're going to try to put these idioms that we just discussed into the blanks uh, in this um, dialogue-based 
uh, fill in the blank exercise. One person speaking and the little arrow indicates a reply. So we can see how the idiom would be used in conversation. There, I'm pretty sure there's one or two here that uh, could use two or three different uh, of the idioms because they're they're obviously quite some of them are quite similar. So don't very worry about that too much. We'll figure it out as we go. Uh, okay, uh, Anna, can you start us off with number one, please? Okay. Mm. I hear Karen's uh, selling her old mini for 500 pounds. Is it in is it in good uh, condition? No, not really. It's on um, mm, um, mm, it's a uh, last uh, Lex. Yep. It uh, certainly uh, seeing uh, better days. Yep, perfect. And yes, indeedy, uh, it would be very common to hear these two idioms expressed together. Absolutely. Uh, not necessary, but it would be extremely common to hear them together. They, they fit together um, perfectly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's on its last legs, meaning you think it's probably going to break down in a month or something. Seen better days. It's not in the, not in the quality, not the quality that it was before. Yes, uh, the, the, the car maybe uh, it will soon be unable to work. <laughs> That's it. That's the idea. Exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, Joe, let me try number two, please. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind who should get the job. Mr. Sullivan was the best. I, I agree. He was. Uh, Head and shoulder about the rest of the candidates, uh, wasn't he? He was in a league of his own. Uh, okay, uh, head and shoulders. Make sure you have plural shoulders, or it sounds strange. The shoulders. Uh, yeah, it's got to be an S on the shoulders. Uh, it just also it just occurred to me, he was in a league of his own. Um, you might also hear he was in a class of his own as well. Similar. I mean, the exact same meaning, really. Uh, okay. So, obviously, again, two idioms expressed together. Very normal because they both basically mean that he was superior in, in comparison, you know, with the rest of the candidates or what have you. Uh, perfect. Good job. Uh, all right. Amos, Amos is gone. Okay, uh, David, number three, please. Okay, hello, can you help me? I'm looking for a CD player. Well, we've got lots to choose from, sir, but if it's sound quality you want, then this Sony is considered to be... Uh, ...than the others. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think this is a... I, then the other... I, I don't know. I think it's a pretty straightforward comparison, David. Mm-hmm. So, uh... Mm -hmm. uh I, I think I, I can... I, I could choose uh, out of this world to say it's... Well, okay, let me give you a clue and something worth knowing about English. If you see van, T-H-E-N, mm -hmm. you're doing a comparison. And when you see comparisons and you're thinking about comparisons, think about comparative adjectives. Because comparative adjectives and van go together like a hand in, like a hand in glove. Uh, yes, but if I... If I have to uh, to fill this blank without uh, looking this idioms, looking to this idioms, probably I I should choose better. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's considered to be better than all the others. Right. But I really can't find the solution here. <laughs> well, here it is. Uh, <laughs> F. Okay. It's miles mm. better. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. It's considered to be miles okay. better than all the others. All right. Uh, okay. That's it. Straight up comparison. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Where'd he go? It's gone. Heidi, how about number four? Brian, you wanted to see me. Yes, yes. Come in and sit down. I'll get straight to the point. Your work was the bear. Uh, ben. Bear. Sorry. Ben. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. Has been well uh, below par recently, and I wondered if you were ill again. Yes. There you go. Well below par to, to talk about somebody's performance. That's very common. Uh, whether that's work performance or service or, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, very common. Okay. Good job. Uh, Mustafa, back to you. Number five. Okay. Uh, five. What's that new restaurant like in King Road? King's Road. You've been there, haven't you? Yes. This food was okay, but it's nothing, but it was nothing to write home about. Okay, there's nothing to write home about. You know, it occurs to me in the sentence, same meaning, you could easily say, it, it was nothing special. And actually, yeah. that, have, that has exactly the same meaning. Uh, okay. I, I, wonder, I wonder why home, like... Uh, why home? Oh, yeah. well, okay, I can actually tell you that. <laughs> um, uh, because uh, when you leave home, it actually, I believe it goes back to the, the gentleman in the military. So as something big happens, whatever, you, you, you go into Paris for the first time or whatever, you write home to your mom and your family. Oh, uh, really, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you're very excited. That, that's it. I believe it. Uh, I believe that's where it originates from the military guys being sent overseas. I, I think so. Anyway, if I'm not mistaken, could be mistaken, but uh, anyway, number six, Anna. Okay. Try it. <coughs> uh, your PA is excellent, bit. Uh, she must make life a lot of easier for you. Oh yes. She's uh, worth. Um, uh, can you scroll up, please? Uh, yes, I could. Um, it's a uh, weight in gold. Yeah. Okay. She's worth. Again, I. This one can be is yes, often yes. used about people. She's okay, worth okay. her weight in gold. She's yep. worth. She's worth it's way, her weight in gold. Yes. <laughs> yeah, her. Uh, yeah, right, right. Okay, the possessive. All right. Anna, do you know what a PA is? No, teach. But uh, it uh, probably could be the mark or the, the grades. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no? your, your PA, here it means personal assistant. It's an acronym. Oh. Or personal oh, okay, assistant. Okay. It's a person. That's that's the deal. Your personal assistant is excellent. She must make life a lot easier for it. Like that. It's also the initials for the state of Pennsylvania in the United States. <laughs> but I don't think he means Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, PA, right, uh, public address system. You're right, David. There's another one, another acronym for PA. Absolutely, you're correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah, your public address system is excellent, Pete. Yeah, okay. Sure, it's worth its weight in gold. Uh, all right, kind of funny. Uh, okay, David, number seven. Did I see you oh. driving... Sorry, Joe. Sorry? I'll come back to you in a second. Go ahead. Go okay. ahead, David. Okay. Did I see you driving? You driving an old Jaguar yesterday? You did. It's over 30 years old, but it's in absolutely mean condition. It's super out of this world. 
<laughs> Why not come for a drive tonight? All right, he's quite enthusiastic about it, isn't he? Yes. All right, absolutely mint condition. All right, notice the use of the adverbs to exaggerate. <laughs> mint condition to exaggerate perfection. Uh, okay, whatever. All right. Uh, okay. Let's look at some more idioms. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Uh, all right, we're going to use the idiomatic expressions in uh, more dialogue-based fill-in-the-blank exercises. So I'll scroll up so make sure we can uh, take a look at that as we go along. Joe, sorry I skipped you briefly, but uh, here you go, number one. Okay, I visited the Tower of London on Saturday. To be honest, uh, I was a bit disappointed. I know what you mean. It's not. Uh, it's not. One of these. Uh, see, it leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, it actually is going to use it's not. So, there it is. Kind of, kind of already here for you. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Okay, and uh, listen to my intonation as I say it, it's not all it's cracked up to be. That's the normal intonation <laughs> to say this. The meaning, um, I really couldn't illustrate it better than the material here. This is exactly how it's, what it's for, what it's used for, to describe something that's not as good as everybody says, or it's not as good as you heard. Uh, you might use this to talk about a movie that you found disappointing. A movie, uh, a restaurant, basically reviewing something, and you're you don't think it's as good as other people said already. Yeah, uh, that's the idea. Okay, uh, number two, uh, Heidi. Our center forward is useless. He only scored three goals this season. Well, he must be about 35 now. If you ask me, he um, uh, he's over the hill. <laughs> At 35, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, that's right. Over the hill, this is a very, very common phrase and a very common concept, meaning you're too old. Uh, notice how it's used here uh, in reference to a specific thing, uh, in reference to being the forward on the football team. So when, when you, it can be used in a kind of a general way, but more often than not you use it when you're, you're basically saying he's too old to do this or that, whatever activity. Um, it can be used completely generally, but yeah. Uh, do you ever feel like you're over the hill? Occasionally, I feel like I'm over the hill. Uh, not every day. Uh, okay, Mustafa, number three. Okay. Hey, what do you mean? It's not good enough. I spent all day preparing this report. Preparing, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but it isn't detailed, detailed enough. It just... Mm. So scroll up, please. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, okay. So I have a doubt between C and F. Mm, between what and what? C and C F. C and F. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it's okay. Well, if it was F, it's gone downhill. That means it was better it's before. Gone. But now it's yeah. worse. So that yeah. he, this is the first time he's looking at the report. So that can't mm. be F. So mm. you're you are right with C. Leaves mm. a lot to be desired. Um, 
All right, this one can be used to talk about whatever, like here, a report. Uh, okay, it could be a review, a restaurant, a movie. Could be talking about a a, a product. Okay, uh, I bought a new computer. It leaves a lot to be desired. There's no sound card. There's no. Uh, it didn't come with um. Uh, I don't know, headphone and mouse. I have to go buy them separately. Whatever. Could be. Uh, it could be used to talk about even a person. Well, such as like, for example, a candidate for a job. I don't know. I looked at his resume, and I, you know, after the interview, I just think he uh, he leaves a lot to be desired. Not really the best quality. He doesn't have the qualifications that we're looking for. Something like that. Just not enough is the idea. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, Anna, how about number four here? Um, sorry, teacher, I have a question. Sure. Uh, as to the last sentence, it uh, um, it uh, would be possible uh, to answer with um, isn't up to scratch. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, I think, I guess it might be, if you ask, okay, where is it? It just isn't up to scratch. Yeah, okay, same meaning. It's just not the quality that I desire uh, is basically the idea. Yes, it could very much, well, it very well could be. Yes. That, that's it. it. Okay, it isn't up to par. It's worse than the par. Um, yeah, you're right. Okay. Thank you. I didn't really see that, but you're right. Okay. Uh, number four. Yes. Uh, why have you invited uh, Professor uh, Professor uh, Professor Wolf uh, to give the lecture? Uh, well, everyone else uh, we asked couldn't make uh, that day, but uh, he's totally out of date. You really must have been. Uh, can you scroll up, please? Mm -hmm. um, have been uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm, that's it. Yeah. Here's another example here of the little cartoon. You can see uh, Humphrey. Oh, okay. When I when I married you, my friend said I was scraping the bottom of the barrel. Okay. <laughs> the worst. The worst. <laughs> That's right. The worst. Uh, whatever's left, the scraps. Okay. There's nothing left. There's no more choices. That's the idea. Uh, so, okay. It could be used to talk about a person. All right. A husband or, uh, okay, an employee or somebody to do a lecture. Could be talking about a person. It could be talking about a thing. Um, Okay, you go to the go kart go kart track, and you there's only one go kart left, and it 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 only only two wheels work. Whatever, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. It's there's nothing <laughs> there's no choice. So okay, all right. So it could be a thing or it could be a person. Either one. Uh, okay, <laughs> you're out of choices, so you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Uh, Joe, number six. Uh, I'm sorry, but this report leaves. Uh, I'm aware that it isn't good as it is. Okay, so it's not good. Uh, all right, I'm sorry, but this report leaves. Take a guess. Uh, uh, it's gone down here. <laughs> What's that? It's a, it's gone downhill. Um, no, where was it? Where did we? Where did we have gone downhill? Uh. I'm, I'm, which uh, one? No, 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 I, I don't think we have it here. 
Have we? Oh, I, oh, we missed can five. I, can, okay, yes. Five. Uh, yeah, it was okay. five. Right, right. All right, we'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, okay, um, Joe, I'm sorry, but this report leaves a lot to be desired. And, uh, okay, we used that earlier, but you know what? It could also be, I'm sorry, but your report just isn't up to scratch because these two here, C and D, basically are in totally interchangeable, really. They mean exactly not up to the quality desired. They both mean exactly the same thing. So, yeah, there it is. Uh, all right. It leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, we... we I missed five, um, so just so we can get a look at it. Uh, David, number five. Okay. Uh, what did you think of the National Gallery? Uh, it's over 20 years since I was last there, and frankly, I think the place, uh, the place has gone downhill. Yeah, okay, that's it. All right, talking about uh, something that's gotten worse. Very commonly used to talk about a, a, a place. Um, well, okay, a museum, uh, a cinema, a restaurant. Um, okay. It, not usually, you wouldn't use this to talk about like a car. Oh, okay, you, oh, you bought this car new five years ago, but it's gone downhill. That, nah, it's not going to work. Um, it's not used to talk about people either. Oh, he's gone downhill. However, I could say your job performance has really gone downhill. You were much better earlier, and uh, you're not—you're just not getting as much work done, or not as good quality as you used to. So, it could be used to talk about as a measure of uh, again performance. Um, and it's frequently used to talk about uh, establishments, restaurant, museum, and so forth. Uh, okay. A little note here. An informal expression used to describe any situation where there might be some sort of problem. Uh, okay. All right. Milk that might be bad, a bad business deal. It, the expression is it's a bit iffy. If something's iffy, it's questionable whether it could be useful or not. Sometimes in the English, construction in, in, of sentences can be kind of iffy. Hmm, well, I don't know if we can really do that or not. <laughs> That's a little bit iffy. Uh, okay. Idea being that it's questionable, and it can be anything—a situation or, all right, milk, whatever. The milk's a little bit iffy. I'm not sure if we, we should drink it. Something like that. Uh, okay, we've looked at a lot of idioms, so we got about five minutes or a little more. Let's see how many of them we can actually remember. Uh, think about the idioms. Add the final word of the expression. Uh, Heidi, number one. Yeah, it's nothing to write home. And what uh, what can I do? Add one more word. About. That's it. Yeah, you need about. It's nothing to write home about. Okay, meaning it's nothing too special. Uh, very good. Uh, number two, Mustafa. That's grabbing the bottom of the world. Uh, barrel. Yeah, barrel. <laughs> barrel. Yeah, <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel. Okay, no more choices to be had. Anna, number three. Yes, his head and shoulders above the rest. Yes, very good. Superior to other people. Uh, okay, head and shoulders above the rest can also be used to discuss whatever, a product. This... Um, okay, this brand of tissue paper is head and shoulders above the rest. Fine, no, no problem. Uh, Joe, number four. He's worth his weight in gold. Yeah, he's extremely 
valuable is the idea. Good job. And uh, Heidi? It's not all. It's something up to be, I don't know. Uh, where is it? Today, today, today. Mm -hmm. where, where was that one? Oh, here it is. Here it is. I, oh, it. Cracked. Not all it's cracked up to be. Uh, okay. Um, when, uh, I, whatever, something, a book, a movie, a new restaurant gets a lot of hype, gets a lot of publicity, and then it turns out to not be as good as it, as the publicity, that's when you can say it's not all it's cracked up to be. Uh, even something like a city, you, you travel and you're not really impressed with the place you go. It's really not all it's cracked up to be, you might say. Mustafa, number six. Okay, six. Your work is not up to up to scratch. Yes. Uh, I, I just it occurred to me that another expression, exactly the same meaning, another way of saying this really, uh, is something is not up to snuff, which is kind of weird. Do you know what snuff is, Mustafa? No, I don't know. Extinguish? <laughs> yeah, you can snuff out a candle, for example. So, also, like scratch, kind of the meaning of nothing or zero is the idea. That's right. Very good. Oh, I'm impressed you know that. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Anna, number seven. Okay. Uh, it's in a league of its own. Okay. It's in a league of its own. I remember a movie about female baseball players. A league of their own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. That's totally besides the point. Uh, Joe, number eight. Number eight, uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. Indeed, it does. Okay, it's not the quality you would, you need it to be, is the idea. Heidi, number nine? No, it's on it, last leg. Yeah. Ah, I kind of feel like I'm on my last legs. <laughs> okay. Oh, person, no, why do you feel it? Okay. Uh, a person may, I, I'm actually demonstrating that a, a person may say that like that uh, in a sarcastic fashion. I feel oh. like I'm on my last legs today, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, Mustafa, since you're here, how about number 10? Seen better days. Yes, it has. Uh, okay. All right. You still got a couple minutes. Rewrite the following idioms using the word at the end in italics. Uh, Anna, can you try number 11? Mm, yes. The car has been uh, very well looked uh, after. Mint in mean, uh, it's, it's in mean conditions. There you go. Condition. No S. Con condition. Mint, mint condition. Okay. Common to use this about cars. Uh, and, and literally anything that people might collect, we often use, use mint condition, uh, whatever, antique furniture, something like that. Uh, Joe, number 12. Which, Joe? The, yep. the car, uh, the car is in better day. Okay, the car has seen better days. Better days. That's good. That's good. Very good. Yeah, I had seen better days. Uh, yes, very common expression there. Um, all right, uh, Heidi, number thirteen. The new diesel automatic is much worse. It's far worse. <laughs> much better. Worse. <laughs> Uh, okay. This is the problem of uh, Volkswagen. <laughs> Much worse. Oh, oh, ah, uh, yeah. I wasn't thinking they need about to that. Pay a lot of fine. Very, <laughs> very controversial. And yeah, I just saw. I think I, I didn't read the article, but I think they found even more transgressions recently, like yesterday. <sighs> yeah. What are you gonna do? Uh, okay, we're about out of time. The last one here, your work is not good enough. It's simply not up to scratch. Uh, 
And that'll do it. Um, we're out of time, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And you guys uh, have a great day, and we'll see you again next thank time. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.